Hi everyone, this is Travis with Committee for Children here. I want to welcome everyone to today's webinar. Just want to let you know that I will be the host for today. So hi everyone, welcome to Second Step, the Foundation of Successful Learning, the complete Second Step program. So before we get started with our topic and I pass it off to our presenter for today, I want to give you a quick look at our agenda for today's webinar. We'll begin with introductions and a little bit about Committee for Children and the work we do. Next, we'll go over what SEL is and why it's important to intentionally teach it. And then we're gonna go through the second step for early learning to grade eight programs and all of their components. We'll show some video examples of the program, talk about how it's taught and how the resources um, support the program as well. And then we'll end our time together with the additional resources we have created to support educators, students, and families during this unprecedented and unusual time during the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, we'll also have some time for a Q&A at the end. Again, I'll be the host for today's webinar, so please feel free to send me your questions and comments in that chat box, and I'll do my best to answer and provide relevant links to resources along the way. So now I would like to introduce our presenter, Miriam, who will take it away from here. Thank you so much, Travis. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today. My name is Miriam Merlis. Um, I'm an education account manager with the Education Partnerships team at Committee for Children. Um, Committee for Children, a little bit about us, is a nonprofit based in the Seattle, Washington area. Um, we have our mission to foster the safety and well being of children through social emotional learning. And we're also pioneers leading the field with our uniquely comprehensive approach, using a solid research and base and connections to experts in the field to bring resources to schools, and districts um, that make a difference in the lives of students, schools, and also communities. We're also leaders in advocacy, helping pass policies and legislation to support social emotional learning, bullying prevention, and child protection at both the state and federal level. So if you're interested in advocacy work around social emotional learning, please join us. Um, if you're interested, just visit Committee for Children's website at cfchildren.org to learn more. We'd love to have you. So Committee for Children is best known for our second step program, which is a family of programs for early learning, elementary and middle school that represent a holistic approach to building a more supportive community for every child through social emotional learning, child protection and bullying prevention. If you'd like to learn more about any of our other programs, please join us for another in-depth webinar in the future. Uh, just register for them in the same place that you found this one at secondstep.org slash webinars. So since we began our work in 1979, so 41 years now, uh, we have more than or, um, 40 years of experience and impact, like I said. This year, our programs will reach more than 16.5 million children in all 50 states. We're incredibly proud to reach millions of children and positively impact communities all across the United States um, and, and also around the world. We also know that we couldn't do this without the dedicated teachers, counselors, and educators that deliver our programs each and every day. So I do want to take a moment just to say thank you for everyone who's here today. Thank you for all of your efforts to make our mission a reality and to help um, our students grow kinder. As an organization, we believe and we practice our motto, which is grow kinder in all the ways we can support schools, you as educators, districts and community based organizations to grow kinder too. So with that, let's get started on our topic today. Now that you know a little bit about Committee for Children and how the program and add on units came to be. I'm going to go into each of the components in a little bit more detail, starting with social emotional learning as the foundation. So to do that, I want to start with this question, why teach social emotional learning? Um, and I'm gonna assume that most of you who are joining us today have an interest in social emotional learning and maybe even have spent some time researching or already teaching SEL to students already. So for those of you who are familiar, I just include this information so that you can use it in your work, being a champion for social emotional learning. And perhaps, you know, if you're tasked with bringing others on board, um, whether it's presenting to a committee um, or just, you know, trying to gain buy-in from other educators, um, this is some information that I hope will help you. 
And for those who haven't asked this question, the next few slides will help see the foundation of why we developed the Second Step program and some of the research that supports our work. So social emotional learning, or SEL for short, can sometimes get mixed in with other initiatives. And though it's not as much education jargon as it used to be, let's make sure that when we talk about SEL, we're thinking about the same thing. So on this slide, there are five social emotional learning competencies based on work by the Collaborative for Academic and Social Emotional Learning, or CASEL for short. You can find out more about CASEL and their resource a research and resources rather at castle.org and Travis is putting those links in the chat box for you right now. Uh, the five competencies are self-management, responsible decision making, relationship awareness, social awareness, and self-awareness. And so these competencies will translate into things like understanding and managing emotions, setting and achieving positive goals, feeling and showing empathy for others, establishing and maintaining positive relationships over time, making responsible decisions even in the face of peer pressure, etc. So the good news is that these competencies can be taught in many ways across many settings and are a great way to sum up what social emotional learning can do to help students. So next I'm going to show you a short video um, that explains why social emotional learning is essential now more than ever. Challenging, unprecedented, uncertain. These words all describe what we're experiencing right now as students, educators, and families are faced with navigating a new normal. But as we plan for the school year ahead, one thing is clear, the intrinsic value of social emotional learning, or SEL. Here's why. One, SEL can foster a sense of safety and be used with trauma-sensitive practices. Students can't focus on learning if they don't feel safe and supported. The COVID-19 pandemic and the crisis around systemic racism have created traumatic experiences for many families. These experiences contribute to fear, anger, and anxiety, and increase the risk of toxic stress. As part of a trauma-sensitive approach, SEL can help students manage their emotions in a safe and supportive way and set them up for learning success. Two. SEL helps build positive connections and relationships. This upcoming school year involves a lot of uncertainty, and site closures have made it difficult to maintain the strong relationships that previously developed between students, teachers, and families. This fall, whether you're planning for in-person or remote teaching, using SEL to build trusting connections within your learning community can help lay the necessary foundation for academic learning. Three. SEL helps address the learning inequality caused by school closures. Remote learning is inherently challenging and not always appropriate developmentally. Students who are already struggling socially or academically are often the ones who face more severe challenges with remote learning. SEL can play a key role in helping students build the skills they need for effective learning, from self-regulation to problem solving, especially in an out-of-school setting. Four. SEL provides support to teachers and staff. It's more important than ever to care for educators' well-being. By helping teachers and staff manage stress, build trust with students and colleagues, and stay engaged at work, SEL can strengthen the whole school community. Now is the time to bring SEL front and center. But don't just take our word for it. In a recent survey by CASEL with responses from 37 states, 84% reported that SEL has increased in importance as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and 78% of states reported that district-based SEL requests have increased since the beginning of the pandemic. We often talk about SEL in terms of improving behavior or its academic benefits, but SEL also builds skills that help bring us together in times of crisis and in everyday life. And in this uniquely challenging moment, SEL is a critical tool in both addressing the immediate needs of students, families, and staff, and helping them succeed in the new school year. All right, everybody, thank you for watching that video. So I love that video. I think it's really important to frame what we're talking about here today in the lens of um, the COVID-19 pandemic. 
um, as well as the other issues that are facing our children these days. So talking about why SEL is so important right now um, is a great way to get started with that conversation around social emotional learning um, as you're trying to gain buy-in from your um, team, your group, whoever you're working with, um, and also parents. So do feel free to take that link with you and share it out. Um, we'll also be including it in our follow-up email. So one important thing that educators and leaders need to balance is the way that time is spent in the classroom. So this slide highlights a study that was done in 2011. It was a meta-analysis looking at 213 st studies of school-based universal interventions for social-emotional learning. So this meta-analysis was a landmark study because it put numbers to what many people in education felt was true, that kids do better in school if they're socially and emotionally supported, and that schools can take an active role in helping them build those skills to help them socially and emotionally, in turn allowing them to be ready and able to learn. So as you can see, after just one year of a universal school-wide social emotional learning initiative, the results showed some incredible gains, and importantly, that SEL is linked to positive academic outcomes as well. There's a 23% gain in social emotional skills, 9% gains in attitudes and a 9% gain in pro-social behavior was encouraging, but an 11% gain in academic achievement is a pivotal point in this study that helped educators see the connection and the importance of social emotional learning. An 11 percentile gain in academic achievement is significant, whether it's looking at your school as a whole or for an individual child who may really need that support to be their best academically. 11% could make a real difference in just one year. And in addition, the study showed that a 9 and 10% reduction in problem behaviors and emotional distress, which may allow for more positive and calmer classroom environments that could allow for more teaching time and for teachers to spend less time on disruptions and settling disputes. So having a school-wide approach to SEL with an explicit skills instruction program like Second Step in place ensures that students are equipped with a strong set of social emotional skills and those same social emotional skills are being modeled by the adults around them. And if that's happening, you can imagine how it can improve relationships within all dynamics of the school community, teacher to student, students with their peers, as well as the relationships formed by teachers and their peers. When you have a strong sense of a supportive relationship within the school community, all stakeholders have an increased sense of safety and support in that environment, which ultimately leads to a more positive school climate. So next, I wanna to talk to you about what um, the Second Step program has for early learning through eighth grade. Um, and Second Step is a universal classroom-based tier one intervention program um, designed to promote social emotional competence and self-regulation, decrease problem behaviors, and increase student school success overall. So for Second Step, what we offer for our social emotional learning program, we have that across pre-K through eighth grade. We also offer a bullying prevention add-on unit for our kindergarten through fifth graders and a child protection add-on unit for our early learning through um, fifth graders as well. So there's not enough time for me to go into too much detail on this webinar because we are talking about early learning all the way through fifth grade, but um, I will invite you to join us for an in-depth look at our content in early learning, K through five and middle school and those add-on units I just mentioned at our webinars. Um, and you can sign up for in the same place you registered for this one at secondstep.org. But to give you a brief description of what the early learning and second step elementary skills and topics look like, they're broken down into four units, starting with skills for learning, and that does include executive function, practice, and skill building. So helping students get themselves into a place where they're ready to learn, where their bodies and minds are calm, they're able to focus their attention, and they're ready to learn. Next, we do unit two, build on to empathy. So learning about the emotions that we feel, what others may be feeling, um, and what it looks like for different students um, of a huge diversity. Um, with emotion management, we then build on empathy and talk about our strong feelings uh, because 
We know what feelings are. We know what they may look like um, after the empathy unit. And we talk about how to manage those strong emotions for yourself and give specific tools like belly breathing or counting backwards um, to manage those strong feelings and also to help assist your peers as um, other students may be feeling strong feelings as well, helping students um, help their peers manage those emotions as well. And then finally, problem solving. So taking all of the skills that they've learned in the previous three units and building onto them finally to use them towards problem solving within the classroom, outside of the classroom, overall to be able to help each other solve some problems and ideally save teachers some time with conflict management. Again, we also have the bullying prevention unit and child protection unit. Um, with early learning and second step um, in the elementary classroom as well, what you get is a physical kit. So you'll have a box with all of these components in them. You'll have supplemental posters, lesson cards, um, which are fully scripted. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Uh, we have puppets for our younger students to help model these behaviors and ideas, our teaching materials binder, unit cards. We do have song CDs and DVDs for our music videos, um, but of course, not everybody is using those anymore. We also have um, all of our songs and videos available to stream online too through our online resources. Um, and for middle school, we are making it easier for second step middle school instruct instructors to teach the skills and competencies that students need to succeed. So we've updated our program um, very, very recently based on the latest studies in adolescent development and social psychology, as well as user and teacher and counselor feedback. So we've continued to include and enhance program elements that really resonate with students, like our Real Voices videos that we'll review later in this presentation. Uh, we'll take a look at the units and the components here at a glance as well. This one is also um, broken down into four units. Unit one covers mindsets and goals. So in this unit, students learn how to develop a growth mindset and apply research-based goal-setting strategies to their social and academic lives. In unit two, we talk about recognizing bullying and harassment. Um, with new research has provided an additional guidance on how to address bullying during these critical ages. And the research has shown that adolescence is a key de developmental period for establishing pro-social pro attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors that prevent the likelihood of youth, the youth becoming victims or perpetrators of violence later in life. So we've chosen to add an entire unit on recognizing bullying and harassment. And in this new unit, we discuss the topics such as responding to bullying in the digital age, sexual harassment, and how social norms can contribute to bullying and harassment. Unit three is about thoughts, emotions, and decisions. And in this unit, students learn how to recognize strong emotions and unhelpful thoughts, and they learn to apply strategies for managing their emotions and reducing stress. Then finally, unit four covers managing relationships and social conflict, where students learn studies for developing and maintaining healthy relationships, excuse me, strategies for developing and maintaining healthy relationships, perspective taking, and dealing with conflict. So with, you get this, with this, you get 26 interactive lessons, um, designed to be taught one time a week for about 25 minutes. They are differentiated by grade level and include um, a performance task assessment for each lesson. Uh, there's also just about 200 advisory activities. Um, program training is all included on the platform with the program. And you'll also receive um, family communications and engagement tools that provide fully scripted family engagement um, ideas as well. So now let's talk about how to teach the second step program successfully and see results. Uh, the number one thing I can recommend to you uh, is implementing with fidelity. Um, and the way that I usually describe it, you know, it always takes a couple years for a new curriculum to catch on. So first I say teach all of the lessons in the order we give them to you. It is based in research. Um, that's why we order it in the way we do. So I just recommend trying to teach all of the lessons in the first year of using second step. In year two, um, I recommend trying to incorporate daily practice for about five to 10 minutes because the lessons are designed to only be taught once a week. So if we can find ways to practice daily and reinforce those skills, um, that continues to reinforce what students are learning. Um, and you'll see more results with that strong 
implementation. And then finally, in year three, I recommend engaging families. So using those family engagement tools that I spoke about um, with Fidelity as well. Um, and with that, you have three years um, of a really strong implementation with Second Step. Of course, every school and district is different, so maybe three years is not enough time for you or it's too much time. We are here at Second Step. You have me and my wonderful team of colleagues on the Education Partnerships team who are here to talk with you about what will work for your school or district or program specifically. So don't hesitate to reach out. Like I said, I would show you what a um, lesson card looks like. I know this is very small and difficult to see, um, but Travis is also including a link to a larger version of this in our chat box right now. Um, like I mentioned, our lessons are designed to be taught once a week, um, and depending on the age range, about 20 to 40 minutes once per week, except for our early learning students, we recommend about five to seven minutes once a day to accommodate their uh, attention spans. And these are fully scripted lessons with explicit instructions on how to teach them. There's not ever any question on how to pick up and teach a second step lesson. It is all there included for you in the lesson card. Really, really easy to just take a glance at the lesson planning notes that are included, and then you're ready to go within five minutes. There's also engaging activities for skill practice throughout the week. So it's not on you to come up with the ways to reinforce the skills throughout the week. We fully script those out for you as well and give you lots of options to reinforce what's being taught um, in that second step lesson that week. We also include academic integration activities. If you would like to tie your social emotional learning lessons back into what's being taught academically and have a guide for that. Same thing with middle school. Um, this again is designed to be taught once a week, like I said. Um, there are short, quick, easy to digest videos and discussion guides. Um, also, you'll see some partner work, group work, um, and performance tasks as assessments, and then challenges for classrooms as well. Um, and similar to the elementary and early learning program, this is designed to be taught by the teacher and facilitating a classroom discussion. It's not like a lecture. It's not a one-to-one -one where students are only looking at their computer screen. It is designed to cultivate relationships. And whether we're doing that virtually, like we are here today, and you're sharing that screen and those videos um, over Zoom or another platform, it also will give us a chance to really cultivate these relationships through conversations, whether that's virtually or in the classroom. And just again, to give you a visual of what that timing might look like, um, again, early learning is five to seven minutes daily. Kindergarten, we ramp it up to about 20 minutes once a week. Uh, for first through fifth grade, we ask that you allow about 35 to 40 minutes. Um, these are some, you know, the SAGE students are more inclined to want to have a longer discussion about it. So we want to give some extra wiggle room for students to talk about the social emotional learning concepts that they're learning. And then for six through eight, we dial it back to about 25 minutes um, a lesson once a week, plus those advisory activities. And I did talk about reinforcing skills. Again, Travis is going to have an example of this for you in the chat box. Um, we have following through activities for days two through five. So day one being the day you teach the lesson, whether that's on a Monday or a Thursday, it does not matter. Um, we just give you those follow through activities for the other days of the week that you're not teaching this specific second step lesson. We also have take home activities that are just as easy as either emailing home or printing and sending home reflective writing assessments as well. Um, we've got books and book lists that we recommend for both students, teachers, and parents and curriculum connections to connect to what you're teaching in the classroom academically as well. And like I said, in middle school, we also have about 200 advisory activities designed to do the same things um, to reinforce these skills. So whether it's classroom discussions, classroom activities, um, social service projects, we give lots of guidance in our middle school program. There's also principal resources and a free resource called parentteenconnect.org. That's something you can go visit right now and you're more than welcome to share out to families. Um, it's totally free and some conversation guides for parents, guardians, um, and their students at the middle school age. Again, we also have that bullying prevention unit. So based on the latest field research, the Second Step Bullying Prevention Unit 
um, serves kindergarten to fifth grade and teaches them how to recognize, report, and refuse bullying. We call that the three R's. Uh, there is unlimited online staff training, just like with any of our programs. You do get reinforcing lessons, posters, and DVDs, but of course, also that online streaming for each grade. You have the family materials, online resources in addition to what's in the notebook for teaching, implementation, and evaluation. We also do give lessons and family materials in Spanish for you as well. Um, and just a note, while some of us are teaching hybrid or fully virtually, we don't recommend that the Bullying Prevention Unit is taught in remote learning classrooms. We do recommend it's done in person. And I'll say the same for the Child Protection Unit. Because it's sensitive information, we do recommend that it is not taught in remote learning classrooms. We recommend this is done face-to-face. -face. So for the Child Protection Unit, uh, this is an add-on for early learning through fifth grade. It is research-based, just like all the second step. Um, the Child Protection Unit provides extensive online training and age-appropriate lessons and family education materials as well. So educators, families, and children have the tools that they need to recognize and effectively respond to abuse. So again, unlimited online staff training, you have the lessons, posters, supports for each grade, family materials as well, um, and all the online support that we can offer. And for what online training looks like for these two add-on units, you have three modules. And depending on your role, you may or may not complete one or more of these modules. We have leadership for laying out policies and procedures related to bullying prevention or child protection or both. Um, and then staff training. So to talk about the signs, behavior, and reporting for both bullying and child protection. And then finally, the teaching module. So teaching the lessons and engaging families and overcoming the uncomfortability that can sometimes come with these difficult topics like child sexual abuse. So for the resources that we offer, we are really building out a lot for COVID-19 that I'll be getting to in a moment. But what you'll always have with Second Step um, on secondstep.org when you register your kit or you start up your middle school license, You'll have those teaching and implementation tools that we've spent the last 41 years developing and updating to um, continue to be relevant to our products. Um, we also have video examples and classroom demos so you can see what it's like to teach Second Step. We also have Spanish translations um, of the lessons, of the lesson materials, of our the take-home um, notes to families. Um, the staff training resources is totally unlimited. You can do that on demand anytime. So if you have anyone joining your staff in the middle of the year, in the fifth year that you're using Second Step, um, anytime at all, you can always access that training. We also have digital versions of our program resources um, and engaging family resources and tools. Uh, we also have our enhanced online resources um, to improve navigation. We also are offering full lessons available grade by grade in the lesson scripts. So each grade level from early learning to fifth grade has an updated easy to navigate lesson and training materials. So easier to find your way around in um, and you will have all those lesson scripts available online, which is something new that we've decided to do to support you um, with at home teaching, um, virtual or hybrid. So if you're already a program user and haven't logged in for a while, I definitely encourage you to go and go to your new dashboard and take a look. Like I said, we do have Spanish materials available. So you've got the lessons online, family letters, home link activities, and our glossary. Um, also, if you would like to purchase posters or sing-along CDs or DVDs for in Spanish, you're more than welcome to. But again, that's all free online for streaming as well. Also, we do have our reinforcement tools, like our elementary school principal toolkit. Um, that includes our morning announcements um, that are totally scripted out, school assembly scripts, staff meeting activities, conversation guides, um, and digital tools for principals as well. Um, for that, we think it's, I mean, it's not just what we think. It is based in research that the most effective um, school-wide implementations for a social-emotional learning program are supported at the leadership level. So that's why we provide this tool. Um, again, I'm going to play one quick video for you in the chat box, excuse me, in the multimedia viewer. The field of social-emotional learning has recognized that best practice implementation of 
second step or any social emotional learning curriculum is very heavily dependent on the leadership of the principal. Committee for Children recognizes the importance of principal leadership so much so that we have now developed a principal toolkit for the second step program. The principal's toolkit is intended to be a very concrete, structured tool that will help a principal go through the entire year of second step along with the classroom teachers who are teaching the program. One of the really neat things about the principal toolkit is that it provides tools for the principal to more deeply engage staff in second step content, to engage families in the community with second step content, and to engage students individually as well as at the classroom and school-wide level through assemblies and morning announcements, as well as a tool that helps them with office referrals. And so it gives the principal tools to address all of those various people that they interact with at various levels. Um, one other thing I want to mention to you is our out-of-school time program. Um, this is another great resource uh, to support social-emotional learning. It's our newest research-based SEL program. Um, Second Step Out-of-School Time is designed for kindergarten through fifth grade students to develop a social-emotional skills like community building, empathy, kindness, and a growth mindset. So it is different than our um, in-class program. It includes fun, age-appropriate activities that are focused on social-emotional learning. You've got durable learning materials in a 12-spiral-bound notebook um, group and a total of 147 activities that average about 20 minutes each. So each grade band has four units, starting with community building, then growth mindset and goal setting, understanding emotions, and finally empathy and kindness. So this is designed to, again, teach these social emotional skills, but it's different than the social emotional in-class program that we have. So if you have students that are getting second step in the classroom and also out of school time, uh, they're just supplementing those social emotional learning skills, learning more um, also about community building. Um, so it won't be repetitive. It stays exciting and fresh for those students. Um, so I do want to now switch gears and talk about COVID-19 related resources. Um, this is an extremely stressful time for all of us, um, just the not knowing of what's going to happen, the concerns of the short term now. I mean, we've been here for about eight months, so that term and then also the long-term impacts that this will have on our students with COVID-19 for students in schools, all of these concerns just keep growing. So we've compiled and created some resources that you can use to help your young people learn the social emotional skills that they need to get through these challenging events and cope with trying times. So first, I would definitely recommend our, you visit our new support page, secondstep.org slash COVID-19 support. This has been constructed especially to support you through this time. Um, right now, you'll find for our current program users, we've got the Leaning Into Second Step K-8, through Resources and Guidance for Teaching Second Step Virtually Guide. And that includes guidance for those with or without their physical kits and teaching the all digital middle school program as well. We've also given special copyright permissions to live stream or record lessons. Um, actually, we've extended it now for, through June 30, 30th, I believe. Um, that just happened yesterday. So um, I apologize that it's not updated on my um, screen here, but we have um, extended that through the end of the school year 2021. So uh, check out what those special copyright permissions ensue if you do want to live stream or record our lessons. Uh, we do also have our social emotional learning at home resources for remote learning document. And then we're also running a whole series of live webinars for program users and recorded K through five lessons. So check out our webinars page for the um, recorded uh, webinars that are relating to teaching Second Step from Home and COVID-19 support. And on that page, we've also provided links to some additional free resources to help support you as educators and also children and families. So I'll share a few of them on the next few slides before um, we continue um, and move on to questions. But we are continuing to monitor this ever-changing situation, and we're going to provide more support addressing the needs of our community, so Second Step program users and students and families. So stay up to date with all of our resources, again, 
and check back often because we are making updates at secondstep.com, excuse me, secondstep.org slash COVID-19 support. So we do also have on that page a suggested plan for implementation for second step programs um, right now with virtual and hybrid back to school guides, advice on how to best prioritize content to meet the needs of students and the staff when time is limited. We also have an in-person community rebuilding unit. Um, this is a brand new unit for Second Step Elementary and Middle School um, to try to support building community efforts whenever your school reopens for in-person or hybrid um, lessons. It's about 30 minutes weekly of lessons that include daily check-in templates, really similar to what other Second Step units look like. This is just specific to coming back to school from COVID-19. We also have our upcoming SEL for Adults program, which will launch in 2021. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've released our Resilience During Crisis module early as a field test and a way to support our educators during this difficult time. It's designed to strengthen leadership and staff knowledge about social-emotional learning and deepen their own skills as um, adults with social-emotional skills. So this has free access to the field test version for SEL for adults. It's focused on self-care, um, care for each other and student care. And it's a chance to provide feedback and help make this program better as well. So not only is it a free resource, but your input matters. So I'd recommend um, it because it's open to the public, it's designed for anyone to use, but it is especially focused on educators, um, that you go ahead and um, go sign up for it. The website is on the screen here, but it's also linked in the chat box. You're more than welcome to share that out with anybody you think might make use of it. Uh, I also want to take a moment to talk about resources to address racism for your students and your programs. Many people are looking for these resources right now. It's not only COVID-19 that's a pandemic in our country. Uh, we are also dealing with these racial violence incidences, and you know how I mean, you can only imagine how that affects your students of color. Um, since Committee for Children is an organization um, for social emotional learning, we admit that we're not experts on anti-racist pedagogy, and Second Step is not specifically an anti-racism curriculum, but we have selected a few organizations that are experts and feel strongly confident that they can help you in your work. So I'll start by recommending Teaching Tolerance, um, Facing History in Ourselves, and the Greater Good Science Center. So I hope you'll explore their 100% free offerings specifically related to anti-racism. The links are in the chat box. And in addition, we're in the midst of creating an anti-racism guide to align with the Second Step family of programs that's going to be released a little bit later um, in 2020. And then before we finish up, I just have a few more free resources for you. Um, we are all about the free resources these days. Um, and these are the last few um, that you can find links to on our COVID-19 support page. Travis is also linking them to you in the chat box. First, we have our Imagine Neighborhood podcast, which is an innovative way to help kids four through nine and their families to work through some of the big things happening in their little lives with strong, with songs, games, and interactive, timely content. So season one is out and season two is underway. Next, we have our free mindfulness resource called Mind Yeti. It's got 15 free sessions available to you on YouTube. They're short five minute audio sessions to promote focus, calm and gratitude among other mindfulness topics. We also have our Captain Compassion bullying prevention resources available to you year round. But as you know, October is, uh, or as you may know, October is bullying prevention month. So this is a really timely um, time to use Captain Compassion as a free resource for your educators um, and families. And then lastly, we have our Hot Chocolate Talk website, which is a research-based guide to helping families and educators talk to children about child abuse and child sexual abuse. These conversations can be hard, and we um, think that they're a little bit easier with our guidance and to pour a cup of hot chocolate and start that conversation about child safety. Finally, we'd encourage you to join our Second Step Educators community on Facebook. Here you can connect with peer educators dealing with issues that might be similar to your own. So you can ask questions of your peers, learn what's working for them, and share your own experiences. And again, Travis is linking that to you in the chat box. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. That was a lot of me talking, so I appreciate your time and attention talking about what we offer for Second Step Early Learning through eighth grade. 
Um, I am going to open the floor up to questions here in a moment, uh, but I also want to conclude before um, people start signing out um, that we are here to help. Like I mentioned, you have our support anytime, anywhere you're using Second Step, no matter how long it's been, uh, we are here to support you. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us at any time. Um, we have our email any time of day, support at secondstep.org. You're also welcome to call us Monday through Friday. We're here from 6 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. The phone number is on your screen. We have an extremely knowledgeable group of um, client support team, and they are really, really fantastic. So don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions you have. All right. And we have a pretty quiet chat box today, but if you do have any pressing questions, do put them in there. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to play one more video for you. Um, about empowering our educators um, through social emotional learning. It's going to be about a three minute video, so I will be right back once it's finished. The idea that I can improve kids' lives with respect to social emotional learning makes me feel valuable. I love literature, but I didn't get into teaching because I love books. I got into teaching because I love kids. We're impacting the world as a teacher, and I think that's great responsibility, and it's great to see the impact that we do have on these students. We are seeing an increase in academics and academic success, as well as a decrease in negative behaviors. It's given us an opportunity to have those conversations with teachers about when would you send a behavior to the office versus what you can handle in your classroom. And it's empowered them to be able to handle things within their own classroom setting without disrupting that academic environment. It gives them confidence that they have a set of tools and capacities to approach kids who struggle. With the kids having better behavior, you're not stopping your lessons every five seconds and getting them back on track. You can get a whole lesson in. You can then get to the fun stuff, the experiments, or the hands-on in every lesson. The kids are embracing the songs. Kindergarten teachers are saying the kids love the belly song. And, and so there's just fun things like that that make it fun to learn. Just forming these relationships that you know in some way you're changing these students' lives and you're really making a difference. Establishing that relationship is so crucial because a lot of the time these kids, they get a little older, you know, they push the boundaries. They don't look at the teacher as that person that they'll listen to everything about. I carry my feelings on my shoulders sometimes, so if I ever get mad, I stop and breathe and it helps me calm myself down. I feel really proud if I see them use these skills outside or they tell me, oh, I use this at home today, you know. Um, that shows me that they're going to be a good citizen as they grow up. We need to think about what kind of world we want to build and what kind of future we want for the students across the country so that we build toward a world that we all want to be a part of. None of it would work if it weren't for the teachers because of their work and dedication and their belief in the systems that we're building. That's why our school is the school that it is today. Thanks for watching that video, everyone. I wanted to let you know in the slide deck that we're sending out to you, we do have all of the resources that we linked today throughout the chat box consolidated in our resources slide at the very end of the deck you'll be receiving. So you don't have to worry about saving them or writing them all down. They're all here for you. Um, all right, with that, I am going to say thank you all so much for your time and attention today. Um, like I said at the beginning and like that video just mentioned, we really can't do it without educators like you who care about the social and emotional well-being of their students. So thank you so much for everything that you do. You are so appreciated. Um, and I know it's it's tough times at the moment. Um, so just a little extra appreciation for you today. Um, again, if you are interested in getting a deeper dive in any of these products we've talked about today, please join us again for uh, another webinar. You can sign up at secondstep.org. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Have a good rest of your day.